Hi, everyone. Welcome to Strategies for Collecting Free and Reduced Price Meal Applications, Leveraging Outreach and Promotion. Next slide, Chelsea. So here's today's agenda. I'm going to start us off with some basic housekeeping notes, and then I'll introduce myself and the speakers, and then our three dynamic speakers will share their expertise. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about a newly released toolkit that is specifically for free and reduced price meal application outreach. And then the remainder of the time will be used for question and answer. So in terms of housekeeping, this webinar, this webinar is being recorded. The recording along with the slide deck will be on the Center for Best Practices website after the webinar and you will be able to access it at any point in time. If you have questions at any point throughout this webinar, please enter them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Like I said, we will have time at the end to get to them, but you certainly don't have to wait to enter in your questions um, until the very end. Next slide. So I would just like to take this opportunity to highlight our Center for Best Practices. This is where we have, like I said, webinars, toolkits, resources, research, all sorts of information, all at your fingertips and all free. So if you don't visit our site regularly, I encourage you to do so because there's lots of great information there. All right, let's move on into, into in, excuse me, onto introductions. So I'm Summer Krieg Souser. I'm a senior program manager at No Kid Hungry, and I will be your moderator today. We are so fortunate to have three excellent speakers with us. Scott Richardson is the director of nutrition at Dawson County Schools in Georgia. Andrea Cruz is the Child Nutrition Director at Brandon Valley School District in South Dakota, and Don Pulley is the Food Service Director at Bendel Public Schools in Michigan. So without further ado, I will hand things off immediately to Scott to talk about how he connects with the families in his community around free and reduced price meal applications. Scott, whenever you're ready. All right. Thank you so much, Summer. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. Um, I am Scott Richardson. I am the Nutrition Director for Dawson County Schools, uh, Dawsonville, Georgia. If you're not familiar, we are in the North Georgia Mountains, uh, just a little bit above of, um, Atlanta, Georgia. You know, looking at this, and I came from a CEP program and moved up here into a uh, relatively low percentage of free reduced, uh, mostly paid. But looking at the changeover from uh, COVID to uh, post-COVID and the change going back to a free reduced app lunch application, it became very apparent that the biggest thing that needed to happen was communication, was letting our families, our stakeholders know what exactly was going on and what was coming. So uh, the team here in Dawson County, um, we are you know, one Dawson, which means all of us, we worked uh, collaboratively together. Um, towards that excellence. And part of our excellence together is looking at how we can make sure that our stakeholders are fully engaged in what's happening in our school district. Part of that was getting the information out about the free reduced lunch applications. A novel idea that I had, I have experience in media. So one of the things I did was actually put together a video. Uh, the video is about two minutes long and we ran it on our website. We had gotten so much positive feedback for, from it, I actually created a video that's a generic version of the video you're about to see and released that out on the um, Facebook uh, School Nutrition Professionals Group. And it ended up like a firestorm. It's, it's about in about 42 states. So without further ado, let's go ahead and throw it on back and we'll uh, play that video so you can see a little bit of what I'm talking about is how we really thought outside the box and making sure that our stakeholders knew exactly what was coming and the expectations for the new school year with free reduced lunch application. You heard the news? There are changes coming to your student's school lunch and breakfast. With the close of the school year, the USDA ended the pandemic free school lunch program. That's right. The USDA waivers that allowed Dawson County Schools to offer meals at no charge to all students during the COVID pandemic expired on June 1 of 2022. This means that the Dawson County School District will return to normal operating procedures and will begin accepting the school meal application forms beginning on July 1. These application forms will determine whether a student is eligible for paid, free, or reduced breakfast and lunch. Only one application is required per household, please. But don't worry, 
The Dawson County School Nutrition Program has made it even easier for you to fill out our online school application. Just head on over to the district website and follow the link or go to the My School Bucks website. The school meals application is now electronic and easy to fill out on any computer. If you don't have a computer, don't worry. Just contact your student school or the school district school nutrition office at 706-265-3246 and they will have a paper application available. Just remember, by filling out the school meals application, you are doing more than just applying for school meals. You're also helping your Dawson County Schools apply for increased funding for student academic programs and services. Filling out the application also helps our school apply for increased funding for internet and other technology services. If your student qualifies for free or reduced meal pricing, it can help them with tuition assistance for SAT, ACT administration fees, as well as discounted application fees when applying for college. Sounds like a pretty good deal, right? July 1 is just around the corner, so take one thing off your to-do list and fill out the school meals application. So that was an abbreviated version of the uh, of the full commercial. And one of the things that we wanted to do is right here on this slide is make sure that our stakeholders knew that filling out this application meant more than just applying for free reduced lunch pricing. It also helps with the total um, funding with our school system. So this was a um, graphic that actually was set out by the uh, Georgia Department of Education as a ways of helping school districts with getting the word out. And I just thought, you know, we can create this, put this into a nice um, commercial. And this commercial has been run everywhere. The generic version of this obviously took out Dawson County um, and just, uh, again, the same script that I wrote um, applies, only I did not use the, uh, the taglines in there, naming my district, but just doing schools in general. Um, and like I said, it, it's gone up on the um, school school nutrition professionals web Facebook group, and it's been it's it's taken off uh, like a firecracker. The good thing about it is by us starting early, and by us putting this out there, um, what we were able to do is really get our parents engaged in what was about to take place. And by doing this, we had phenomenal response to where our first day of school was August the fifth. Uh, I know that's a little early for those who may be uh, in the northern part of the country, but uh, down here in the, in the good old south, we start a little bit earlier. And um, by the first day of school, we had about a third of our student population. We have 3,900 students. Between about 1,100 at to date have already been classified um, and or turned in applications. So it's been amazing that before school started, we already had a huge rush and are almost at our peak for what we normally would have as a traditional um, poverty rating. So we're almost at a threshold from what our poverty usually is. Um, that's tremendous for us. I mean, obviously we want to have more and more come in, but um, the fact that we've been able to get this many students classified this early has really been a big, big uh, asset to the school system. If you go to the next slide, this is these slides here, um, this is one of the Facebook posts that we put out that has the commercial on it. We put the commercial on our um, website as well for the school nutrition page. And I've done a couple other videos uh, outside of this just to help with letting parents understand how to actually fill it out. So I've got another video that explains how to actually fill out the application. So parents can go online and go to our website and actually pull up the how-to of actually you know, how they fill out the electronic application. It's tremendous. I can't say enough about how social media really helps drive the boat when it comes to information now. Um, everybody's doing it. And, you know, when it's done correctly, it really, really helps tell the story, not only of your school nutrition program, but it also gets the messages out there that you need to have so the community understands where you are and where you're heading. Uh, using social media has, you know, leveraging that platform has really been important. Um, for us to really get our story out, to talk about what our meals are like. It's a free advertisement for the different meals we serve in our cafeterias. And it has also helped us with increasing our participation, even amongst the paid uh, students, 
because they actually see exactly what type of meals are coming out of our, of our cafeterias. Uh, go to the next slide. And this is the, um, this is one of the other ones we put on Facebook. And if you see there, you, what we did is with QR codes, basically it makes it really simple. Uh, we use Mosaic uh, for our um, lunch application software and uh, the Mosaic program has inside of my school apps. So these two uh, QR codes I actually created uh, through a QR generator to link them to the My School apps that has our application on it. And one of, one of them is in English and the other one obviously is in Spanish. So that just gave another level of, of ease for our parents to be able to get to those applications to get them filled out. Open house, when we had open house, we put computers in all of our lunchrooms made sure we had stations, paper, both paper applications and computer stations to let our parents go ahead and fill out those applications. So, you know, the biggest thing, being a person who's been in media for, for a while now, I can tell you that it's getting ahead of the story, getting the story out there early is the best way to be able to tackle um, making sure that all your stakeholders understand what your program is about, where your program is going, and what your program needs to be successful because your stakeholders make your program successful. And by leveraging these type of, which are free, you know, social media is free. So by leveraging these platforms, you're enhancing the ability to connect with more people uh, with your programs. And I think the next one right here, again, uh, that uh, five reasons for completing the free reduced lunch application, that's also up on our website. Um, this just gives, it's the same thing what was in the video, it just gives another graphic that really helps parents fully understand the funding issue. It's not just school nutrition, the total funding that happens when parents fill out that free reduced app. Um, you know, again, coming from a background in federal programs, everything that federal programs relies on has to do with that school meal application. So we have a huge, um, a huge responsibility because we, we as nutrition directors are helping the funding of the other major programs within your school district. So it's really important. Get the message out, get the message out early, be creative, have fun with it. There's a lot of things you can do. Be creative, have fun, and um, hey, you'll be successful. Wonderful. Sorry, it took me a minute to get off mute. Scott, there are questions in the chat just for you. Um, we have another minute if you want to answer. Hannah says, um, does he mean families when he says stakeholders, when you're talking about stakeholders? So if you could elaborate. Yes. Um, so we're, you know, obviously we're talking about families, um, you know, all your stakeholders, your community. Um, you want everybody to know about it because when I say stakeholders, putting this out and letting all stakeholders know what's happened is a lot of our social media was shared with some of the um, some of our partner groups in Dawson County. So the more that the media was shared, the more people understood and was able to get it out in the community to help families understand the change that was coming on. So yes, with stakeholders, I'm meaning everybody in general, we are targeting obviously our families and filling out this application. And then uh, another participant, Karen, asked, where is the application video located? I the have application the, help video, excuse me, located. Oh, uh, in my private collection, but I can put that on my YouTube page. Great. All right. Thanks so much, Scott. That was so incredible between the videos and the QR codes and the information about just getting the critical information out early to the stakeholders is so vital. Um, great information. So. Our next speaker, Andrea, uh, is also going to talk about her outreach that she does. And Andrea, whenever you're ready, take it away. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's great to be here. I am Andrea Cruz. I am Child Nutrition Director for the Brandon Valley School District in Brandon, South Dakota, kind of in the Sioux Falls area. Um, I have about 5,000 students in my district. Quite a low free and reduced percentage, but we are really pushing this year to, to increase that. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next. Perfect. Um, so Scott kind of hit on it a little bit, but communication is key. It's the biggest thing for sure when, in my opinion, when you're trying to get families to complete this application, 
communication is really what's going to get those applications filled out. Um, you know, families don't know what they don't know. So just getting that information out there is, is going to help a lot and, and using all of the different things that you have available to you. So just on the screen, there are some ideas and things that we have done here in Brandon Valley. Um, over the last couple of years, we have had a very small number of applications filled out. So we've done and tried lots of different things. And I think I'm gonna have to um, rip off and duplicate, do a little R&D on that video that Scott showed because that was fantastic. Um, but here's just a couple ideas, things that we've done like I said, first and foremost, family communication. Is there a way for you to message and portal all families all at once to make it really easy on yourself? Draft up an email and send it out that way. In my own district, I have found that administrative support is huge. It made all of the difference within my district. Um, I sent emails probably twice to families when our applications opened. We opened our applications on July 18th for families to fill out. I sent a couple of emails from, from myself. We uploaded different things on the parent portal so that they had that information. We updated the child nutrition website. We did all the things, um, but until my superintendent sent an email in reg about free and reduced lunch applications. And actually that's like that third bullet there. He also sent a robocall specifically about free and reduced lunch applications to all families. It wasn't until then that we really saw the applications pouring in. Um, you know, so, so we sent all of that message from the child nutrition department, but when it has the name of the superintendent on it, unfortunately I do think it means a little bit more and that support really, really made a difference in our district. Um, I think after, I love to tell this story, after we had the administration send that email and the superintendent sent something out, we went from getting maybe maybe five, maybe six applications, you know, every couple of days to we had over 100 applications overnight. So administration administrative support is is a big piece um, and, and that plays a big role in getting in getting folks to to fill out the applications. And I also think it gets everybody on the same page about the importance of applications as well, which that middle um, piece, that middle picture there, just getting the importance out there about why free introduced applications are important, not only to families, but also to the district. That handout there in the middle is actually a resource that our state agency provides to schools if they want to share that information with families. It's, you know, I encourage people to, some state agencies are really helpful. So reach out to them, see what resources are available, utilize them and, and get families the information that they need to really understand the importance of why free and reduced applications matter. Um, and I know Scott mentioned this one as well, but just make yourself known. If you have back to school nights, if you have open houses and you're in your district, even if schools don't want you there, weasel your way in. It's important to, you know, we are in every building. If you have more than one building in your district, child nutrition is unique in the sense that we are, we have a little foot in every building because what we do is important and, and, and district wide. So get to those open houses. We just had one last night actually at our high school in our middle school and we, had iPads available to families to actually log on while we were there so that we could answer questions and help them fill out applications while we were sitting right there. So, you know, an application is, it can be pretty quick, um, five or 10 minutes to fill that out, especially if you're, you're sitting down and you're doing it and you have the resources available to answer questions as well. Um, and as an added bonus at those back to school nights and open houses, you can use that time to collect lunch money um, and you know collect meal accommodation forms if you have. I know that's not what this is about, but just making sure to get yourself out there, um, you know, make yourself have a presence at some of those those events. So now that you've messaged, you know, you you figured out how you're going to message to your families. I also think it's very important to message effectively. Um, parents get, you know, probably 50 emails or maybe 10 emails a day or something like that, something crazy the first couple of weeks before school starts and then the first couple of weeks into school. So 
they're not going to read everything or if they do they're not going to read it fully um, and so just knowing how to effectively message is also important so I have my five favorite tips that I have sort of taken from others um, and, and just some things that I've come up with myself as well. So the first one is just be consistent. If you are messaging one thing, but your administration is, is messaging something else to families. Um, my favorite story on this is when I first started as the director here, I sent out one date that applications were gonna be available. My administrators sent out a date a few days ahead of that. Um, and so there was just a lack of communication on our end and, and families were quite confused when it wasn't open and it just bombards phone calls and messages to you. So consistent messages, whether it's dates or application processes or whatever it is, just make sure the message is consistent across the board. Um, keep it short, be concise. Like I said, parents are getting tons and tons of emails and communications from teachers and principals and child nutrition and transportation and all the things teachers are sending. So keep it concise, get to the point. You know, I, I always include links and attachments and things in my emails just in case parents want more information. It's easily accessible, but they don't have to read it all at once. You know, include in an email, free and reduced meal price applications are open. If you believe you apply, if you believe you, you are eligible, fill out the application and then include a link to more information. How do you fill out those applications? Why is it important? All of those things. Be clear on your messages. I have learned my time in this position. Don't ever assume that people know what you're talking about when you say free and reduced meal price applications. Remember, um, many families in your district over the past two years, you know, a lot of your second graders and then your first graders and your kindergartners have never actually had to pay for meals and so have likely never had to deal with free and reduced applications. So get the information out, be clear about what the application is, um, be clear about why it's important, share that information with families so that they have it and they can make their, their decisions on if they're going to, you know, we want them to apply, but that can, can give them an informed decision on and if they should or how they should do it. The last one on the screen is, is really important to me. I really stress this in my own district um, and it's encouraging accountability for families. Um, I This is my favorite tip, I think, of, of the five that I have for you. It doesn't matter if you have 400 students in your district or if you have 50,000 students in your district, you can't sit and walk every single family through the application. It's, it's so much time, it's so much stress on you um, so encourage accountability for your families. If, if and I, I actually, I heard something in the video that I loved. If you don't have access to a computer, you know, reach out to the department. We have options. We can help you. Um, you know, so we, we also use electronic applications in our district and I get the emails, you know, I don't have a computer. I don't know how to complete the application. So I always come back with solutions. And that's my, my suggestion for you is always come back with solutions. Do you have a public library that has computers available to its community members? Do you have a smartphone? You know, if, an, if somebody emailed you, they might have a smartphone that they could complete that application on. Um, if they don't have internet, can you set up computers or laptops in the school's office or at open houses um, or in your own office? Maybe you have a laptop set up for families to come in at any time and complete those applications. Um, and if all else fails, of course, always have paper applications available to families as well. Go ahead. Perfect. And then my last tip and, and you know, probably the, the best one maybe arguably of them all is just to make it easy on families. So, and to make it easier on yourself actually. So if you don't use like electronic applications and I know there's definitely some, some things that keep districts from doing that, I highly encourage it. Not only is it easier on families, I think, because they can access the application anytime, um, it's also much easier on the district because it's much quicker to process and um, it's just a little bit easier for you to go in and put the information and it will automatically tell you, you know, what the, what the status is then for that person. 
um, written tutorials or video tutorials. I created um, a very detailed written tutorial. If you are not familiar with what your application looks like, if you do use electronic or even if you use paper, get familiar. I went, you know, we created a test account in our district and I went in as the test parent and I filled out an application and I took screenshots and put very detailed instructions on it um, and then uploaded that to our website. Um, I also did the very same thing. I, we have about a eight or 10 minute tutorial video on how to complete the application from start to finish, from the district website to submitting the application. How do you do it? We went in, we did a screencast and we just completed the entire application with instructions. So those things can be very helpful. Um, whether people use them or not is a different story, but at least those resources are available. Um, if you don't have a website for your for your child nutrition department, can you at least get a page or something on your school's website? Um, that's where we have all of our information linked. Um, you'll see down there in the bottom left-hand corner, um, we have all of our tutorials linked. We also have the parent packet linked. So if parents have any questions, that information is all there. Um, and then we created a QR code right there um, with the Apple that we have at all of our open houses so it can direct people right to the website right there in real time if they need anything. And then of course, just my last thing is just make sure that you have translated materials available. So if you have a lot of non English speaking families, they have the ability to easily fill out an application. And that is all I have. For you. I know I'm coming up on my, my 12 minutes, so um, that's my information there. If you ever have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to, to answer. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, I love that my, take, my big takeaway, there's many, but um, families don't know what they don't know. And like we live, breathe, eat this stuff, but mm -hmm. they don't. And so don't yep. assume that they know anything about it. That I feel like is really valuable, valuable insight. Thanks so much, Andrea. So our next speaker, Dawn, is going to talk about how she successfully collects alternative income forms. And so I just want to say a little bit about those before we, before I pass the mic to Dawn. So alternative income forms are completed by families in replacement of free and reduced price meal applications when a school or district utilizes CEP. They are not used to certify students for free and reduced price meals, but are instead used for programs for funding sources that previously relied on meal application data. So like school poverty, um, college application discounts, et cetera, et cetera. And we do hear that they are often simpler to complete than compared to meal applications. Now, 19 states, Dawn is one of them, she's in Mich Michigan, 19 states require this. So there are probably many of you out there on this webinar right now that are also having to collect these forms. And this is why Dawn is on this webinar because she has really important information to share, but also all of her outreach techniques can be applied to free and reduced applications because everyone's trying to get, you know, forms back in from their families this time of year. So with that, Dawn, I will pass it to you anytime you're ready. Hi everyone. I'm from Michigan and we are CEP. We have about 1100 enrollment. Um, we are 100% CEP, which means we are, very high um, free, before we were very high free and reduced applications. So we went to CEP instead. So, um, so I'm gonna be answering a bunch of questions for you today. Um, obviously, if you don't know what CEP is, um, you can look at Summer's thing and in the next slide, you, which you, you can read up on or go to No Kid Hungry. Um, and so they're called household information reports and why we do them and how to get everyone involved in your district, and then what are the benefits of collecting them, which as Summer said before, no one has to turn in a single piece of paper to me for their kids to eat for free. So it really doesn't affect me, but it's really important for the district. And then I run reports to make sure that the we have all the students covered. Um, so here is um, what CEP is, and then the website for No Kid Hungry if you want to learn more about it. Okay, so I make this a school-wide effort, obviously. Um, I collect the forms, but everyone else has to do more than I do. Um, so in May and June, I find the new form on the state website, 
I like um, to pre-fill it out for the secretaries and I put each building in their own color, which helps me and them so they know um, when we're getting, when we're collecting them back. And um, the secretaries make welcome packets during the previous year. And then they um, send them out and mail them in the summer. And um, go ahead, next slide. And then um, when school starts, or be right before school starts, my middle school and high school have their open houses before school starts, and they require the students to bring in all of their paperwork, which is that household survey is in that packet before they can get their schedule. So if a parent decides they don't wanna fill up some of the stuff out, they make the parent fill it out right there in the office, which for those two buildings, it really makes it 100% turn in rate right? because the kids really wanna know where they're going and where their classes are. And we are a very small district, so we still do everything on paper, which a lot of people ask why we don't do it online. And I, I feel like we may move to that, but we're not there yet. Our system works, so we really just stay with paper. It's kind of old fashioned, but we're tiny. Um, and so for my elementaries, they don't always get their, they don't have their open houses right before school starts. They usually do it like the week the week of or the week after school starts. So sometimes with little kids, parents try to send it in their backpack, which you know what that means. That means that the kids forget it or lose it or don't give it to their teacher. So sometimes those two buildings have a little extra work to do to collect those. Um, as you'll see later in a slide, we have parent coordinators in three buildings and they work with our secretaries to collect that, um, those forms, they kind of, make calls to the parents and up in the corner there is what the household survey looks like. So it really isn't that much to fill out. They have to put the child's name at the top, how many they have in the family and then their income and they have to sign it and their address. So this was, um, I actually dug these out so I could take a picture for you guys. This was last year's stack. Um, it's one per family, but since they require them at the buildings, we usually get multiple. So if you have five kids, I usually get five applications. Um, but I, this is my color code for the um, school buildings, plus new students are goldenrod. And what that means is they do those first because they know that they don't have a household survey on um, file. Now you may say, why? do you do them first if it doesn't affect their um, meal pricing, but it does affect their, like for seniors or high school students, um, it affects whether or not they get free um, college applications to in their senior year, we do that early. So they would have to pay $40 for a college application if we don't do them. So we try to, we keep the same rules as when we were um, just free and reduced before. So. We, we just stayed with the same thing. Our system works, we color code them. So that way, if I get audited and something happens and they need to look up a student, I know that I have to look up this kid in the middle school and he's blue. So I start looking for his uh, application to show and it's in the blue pile. So. Um, so after my apps have been processed, um, like I said, we do them in 30 days and we have two secretaries that do direct cert and they do them at least once a month, but they do, they do do that more often in the beginning of the school year. And then um, that way, hopefully they don't have to do as many apps because they're already direct, directly certified. Um, and then I run an undetermined benefits report, which is on the next page, I believe. There it is. So right now that report was ran in August, we don't start school till the 29th. And it basically shows every single student because they don't have a report on file right now. Um, I send this report after I run it to the building secretaries and for them to, I highlight who's in what building and then I just uh, scan it over to them so they know who they need to look for. And they work towards collecting those reports from those students, whether they have to call the student down or make parent phone calls or whatever. Go ahead, Summer. Or, sorry. Um, so what HIRs, which is household surveys, 
help, and this is my student area, which is what I mentioned before, the college application fees. So just because we're CEP and everyone qualifies for free does not mean they are automatically get those fees waived. So in our district, if a kid would normally be a full pay student, he gets free lunch, but I have to prove that they qualify for free to get their college applications waived. So when you, obviously you guys know when you process lunch applications, then you get their report. So I have to get the con the agreement from the parent saying that that information can be used. And then I showed you a free and reduced app. Um, but if they were full pay, then they wouldn't get their college fees waived. So basically that's what helps the students. And the next one is the district. Now this was a big one. So this is um, my superintendent and our um, principals know that this is very important for them, not really for me. So Title I funding helps schools get money for Title I tutors, parent coordinators, which we have three buildings that are full 100% title buildings. Our high school is the only building that is not. For supplies for activities and programs, um, our district runs a strengthening families program, which they pay for out of title funds. And we teach parents how to be better families, basically. Technology would be Chromebooks and smart boards. Title II, which they get funding for that too, professional development for staff. And Title IV is academic enrichment. So here, this is exactly what I was telling you, but this is from No Kid Hungry. So if you guys wanted to get on and um, look, so you guys would have something to sh show your parents, to show your principals, to show your superintendent why it's important to get these back. And um, I put the school funding one, this is also from No Kid Hungry, um, to why you fill out a household information report. And it, and it lists all the things. Athletics, which we don't have a pay to play, but if you have a district that has a pay to play, they would, if they get free lunch, that they would, that also would be waived too. So um, basically my summary would be, get everyone involved, just like everyone else said and friendly reminders for me. So I send emails once a month or so and to get help, but I am, almost a hundred percent collection rate. So I, there's like, I think I had four apps last year that were not turned in and I say apps, but I mean the household surveys. Thanks Don. That's so your, your return rate is so impressive. Um, kudos to that. That's so impressive. And I love the color coding. There are a few uh, people in the chat who also commented on how fun that is and just how smart that is. Um, just a simple color coding will make such a, and I bet that saves you so much time when you do need to, you know, pull applications at a later date. All okay. right. Thank you so much. So I want to move on to our school meals application outreach toolkit. I'm going to share my screen in just a minute and actually take you through the toolkit. But this was newly released from No Kid Hungry, and this is intended for school districts to use to communicate to families about the free and reduced price meal application. So this toolkit includes guidance uh, about connecting with families. There's a 10 point checklist, which I'm gonna show you. There's outreach examples from other districts all across the country. And then we also have ready to use and customizable No Kid Hungry resources available in English and Spanish. So I'm gonna share the screen here. Let me pull it up one second. All right, hopefully everybody can see the School Meals Application Outreach Toolkit. Like I said, this was recently released um, and this is in an easy format where all you do is scroll down and all the toolkit, toolkit is right here for you. Um, this explains what is in the toolkit, but here we have our checklist. Like I said, there's this 10 point checklist and here right in easy accessible uh, place is our district examples and our customizable resources. You don't have to find them if you have to scroll back down, they're right here for you. But I'm gonna scroll down just to show you a little bit more about the toolkit. And all of this is guidance. 
you know, take what you will, take things that are um, valuable for you and apply them however you see fit. I'm going to show you the outreach to families because we have some really great outreach examples. Um, we have our video PSA. This was Scott's, which you saw earlier. We have an email newsletter example, and we even have a state agency example newsletter, which you can customize this as well. And then um, I'm going to show you here we get to our customizable No Kid Hunger resources. So I'm clicking on the social media post just to show you. And I'm going to expand my screen just a little bit here. Um, so we have social media posts in English, social media graphics in English, and then the Spanish versions as well. I'm going to click on the graphics to show you as this pulls up. So if you've seen this before, maybe you have, um, but if not, many of these, or there are certain parts in here that are um, not customizable. And that's because we put some of these elements on here for a broad audience. But there are portions that are cu customizable right here. Now, in order to do anything to these resources, you're going to have to download this. So I'm going to download this. A PowerPoint is going to come up. Once that PowerPoint comes up, and let me see if you can actually see the PowerPoint. I hope that I hope it's coming up. Maybe not. Scott, can you see the PowerPoint? I can see your head. Give me a nod, yes or not. Yes, I can. Great, perfect. So now I have a completely customizable resource where I can type in whatever I need. I can put my logo here if I need, and there's different options to choose from. So this is a really fantastic um, and easily, easily utilized resource. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the toolkit. Let's see, there we go. And I just wanna show you some out outreach examples. These are really fantastic. They're from all over the country. And we have flyers and Facebook posts. I'm gonna click on the examples to show you. And hold on, I wanna change the, the view here so you can actually see. So here are a ton of amazing examples of what districts are sending out to their families as a way to connect and explain why these applications are so important. So there's lots of good information to um, inspire you um, as well as those customizable resources that we have. So that's essentially um, the toolkit. I'm not gonna scroll, can scroll all the way down with all of the, the 10 point um, checklist, but that is the toolkit in a nutshell. And I also want to show you, um, let's see, in sharing my screen, it's hard to, it's hard to navigate other, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen <laughs> because it's too hard to see. Um, I wanted to show you, I'm going to try it one more time here. Thank you for your patience, everyone. I'm going to share my screen one more time. Here's the other resource from my colleague that was also just launched. I meant to show you this alternative income form. So we have a whole resource on this. So you can see this as well and find out more information if you want. All right. What is the link for the toolkit? I'm gonna to plug that into the chat right now. Let's see. But we are now in the... Um, we are now in the question and answer section. So while I get that toolkit link in the chat, it's coming up right here, let's pull up all of our speakers. All right, Scott, Don, Andrea, here we go. Let's see if anyone had any Q and A. Oh, okay, so we have a question for Andrea. Uh, the question is, how do you set up a QR code? It's super easy. You really can just Google generate QR code. <laughs> um, and it's just as easy as clicking um, one of those links and then inserting the, the link that you want the QR code to direct you to, and then it will generate it for you. While we are waiting for questions, why don't we pull up our poll questions? So as folks are thinking about what to ask our incredible speakers, we have some poll questions here today. 
Okay, so let's think about, is this your first team time seeing that toolkit, the free and reduced or the school meals applications toolkit? Have you seen it before or this is your first time seeing it? So we're asking because we have sent out email communication about the toolkit, we've been trying to promote it. And so whether you answer yes or no will help us learn how effective our promotional emails are. And then the next question is, if you have seen this toolkit before today, have you used any of the guidance or the resources? So have you used the social media graphics? Have you been inspired by the resources that are there or have you used any of the guidance? So I'll give folks a, a little bit longer to vote. We'll do another 10 seconds or so. And let's see what, what the results are. Can we pull up the results? All right, okay. Oh my goodness. So the majority of folks, um, oh yes, I didn't know it existed until now. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and then um, several have seen it before. So this is very exciting. Um, it's not drastic, uh, so that's good. Several people have seen it before. And then if you have seen the toolkit, about a quarter who've seen it um, have used the information. So that's really exciting. And then there's a lot that haven't yet. So there's a lot of information that you can still utilize and um, use for your school or your district. So you have options there. All right, thanks everyone. Um, okay, so I think there were some, uh, let's see, questions in the chat. Pauline says, where can I find information letters to parents for CEP schools? And I believe my colleague, Kelly McDonough, she's been pretty good about responding in this chat box the whole time. Let me see. She says, be on the lookout for a new CEP communications toolkit. Yes, coming out from No Kid Hungry later this month. We try to stay on top of the latest and greatest and get resources to you that would be most helpful. So thank you for that, Kelly. Um, is there a link to the informational video that was played at the beginning? Scott, do you want to plug in the link to your video? Um, yeah, somebody, somebody also asked a question about how much did it cost to uh, produce that? Mm -hmm. And uh, it costs absolutely zero. And the reason why is because I shot all the uh, B-roll video uh, in my cafeteria. So what you saw were what our students are eating. Um, I had a friend of mine uh, back in Augusta, Georgia, who does some production. Um, she, I didn't have time at the time to do all the production myself, so she did the production for me, and it came out to be just a wonderful um, video that was fun to, fun to do, fun to use. So really, it, it, it didn't cost anything. Like I said before, have fun with it. Uh, if you have a cell phone nowadays, if you're, if you're an Apple 10 or better, um, you can produce quality videos just at the click of a button. And uh, I use uh, Adobe uh, Premiere uh, Rush. This is the uh, program I use for all my video editing. Uh, it's like, it's a little subscription, but it's like nine bucks a month. And it's really the best one to use as far as user friendliness. So not much on that, but um, yeah, we can, I can put the link up. If you go to um, my YouTube uh, video uh, page there, and I don't know how you get to that link, but basically go to YouTube and search me up, Scott Richardson. Um, you'll be able to find the videos linked there along with some civil rights videos that I also did as well for our state. Scott, this is the video that I, this is your, your generic video. Correct. Yes, and so it's right there. If you want to put in your YouTube channel, feel free. Not a problem, I'd do that. Let's see, so I'm keeping up with the chat here. Oh yeah, maybe the high school graphics team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the Q and A, let's see. Okay, so we have another question. What's the advice on approaching superintendent for garnering support? And I'm sure all of you can answer this. So whoever would like to chime in first. I'm in on that a little bit. Um, my big thing with my superintendent, he's very supportive of the child nutrition department already. Um, but he also has a lot of other things on his plate. So I took it as, as an opportunity to provide information and education. So I always sit with my superintendent before school starts. We have a big long meeting talking about things, um, to get going for the school year. And it was just a matter of 
filling him in on this is the situation. We don't have free meals anymore. This is why free and reduced applications are important and laying it all out educating him a little bit on that. You know, he doesn't need to know the nitty gritty, but it is important for them to know the importance of applications and why they need to be done. Because like I said, in, in my little 10 minutes, that support is huge and it means a lot for, for the families within the district. I would say when I was making my PowerPoint, uh, No Kid Hungry has a lot of um, slides or things that you can, in their toolkit, that you can print, and it'll tell exactly, that's where I got a few of my slides, so exactly what you can print out and take to them, so like the title funding, um, whether or not you are CEP or not, you still get title funding if you have free and reduced kids, so to them, that's important, because they can use that for staff development, tutors, that kind of stuff, so that's where you need to hit it, where it, you know, they don't care about food service and that's not being mean. They just don't have to, we pay our own bills, but you need to point out the money that you could save them if more people filled these out. Coming from a title background, uh, working with uh, my superintendent was really easy to get them to understand the funding behind uh, free reduced applications. She was a new superintendent, but she also understood that very well and uh, was right behind us as far as getting all of our stuff out and getting it out early. So we've been very lucky to have a superintendent who's really championed our cause. Yeah, that's great. Um, we have another question, the Q and A. It says, do you have strategies for chasing down those stragglers? What do you do when the easy stuff has all been tried? Pray. <laughs> Um, it depends. Usually there's somebody that can get to them. I mean, I had one family that wouldn't fill it out last year. I mean, it was literally one family, but they would not fill it out no matter what. And I think a lot of times, you know, we're very small, but we have parents who can't read. Um, we have, um, a parent coordinator who has, uh, a computer in her, uh, outbuilding. She's got a little portable and, we can help them fill it out. I think it's all in how you approach them though, because there's a lot of people who don't want to tell you they can't read. So, but I think it's getting somebody to reach them. We have, um, you know, we have partners here that work with our school system when, when it comes to um, students in need and helping with, with do things like, like filling out the free reduce app. So usually when we do have the scragglers, um, I refer it up to the uh, assistant superintendent in charge of student services and she refers it over to uh, some of our partner agencies and they get involved and they help. You know, there are some rare occurrences where a principal can fill it out for a child. It's a very rare occurrence. USDA does have some regulation um, about that. Um, we try very hard not to ever have to pull that you know, nuclear device out, but uh, sometimes it has to happen, but we're going to do what we have to do to make sure no kid is hungry. Andrea, do you have any additional insight here? Um, I mean, we have used like teachers and administrators in the past to kind of help us with those stragglers, just because it's those people that are seeing students every day. And a lot of times they are the people communicating with families on a daily basis. Whereas, you know, the one phone call or several emails that they've gotten from, from the child nutrition department maybe doesn't mean quite as much. So um, I just think it's an, as much as it is a child nutrition thing it also is somewhat of a district interdisciplinary thing bringing in people that are connecting more closely with the students and the families can help out with that as well great we have another um in the chat pauline asks where can you get the information to provide a student who qualifies for free lunch to get the college app paid um i would think the counselor the counselor should know that they what forms they need to send home to get signed by their parents. Um, because, I mean, we do a lot of scholarships and stuff like that. So this, you know, the counselors should definitely be pushing that. 
usually um, that information is uploaded into the uh, wh whatever your system information uh, is, and you know counselors are the ones who who work with that. If if, if that's not loaded in your uh, school system in, uh, information, then um, usually the counselors work with the nutrition director to find out if if that child would qualify. Same for Brandon here. We use counselors a lot, and um, we also have a special services director that can occasionally help us with those sort of things as well. And then Pauline has a follow up. She's saying guidance counselor, and I think that's what you mean, right? Yeah. And then Nicole asked, what was the Facebook site mentioned? Professional School Nutrition? Yes. Um, on Facebook, there's a school, uh, school Nutrition Professionals group. There's about three or four of them out there on Facebook. Um, the school, school Nutrition Professionals group is a great um, sharing place. Um, it, it, soup to nuts. It's not a complaining site. It's a sharing site. Uh, the other one, uh, there are several of them that are out there. But the other one I like also, who's um, uh, Dale Hayes has one as well. Um, and Dale's is a phenomenal resource as well. Yeah, and my colleague Kelly is putting That's some of it. the names in the chat, yep. Yes, there it is. Tips for School Meals at Rock, yep. Yeah, there are a few groups out there. Yeah. Let me see if our, if our Q&A box has any more questions. Okay, so we have run Question reads, for more affluent districts who don't meet the reduced slash free lunch percentage threshold, are there resources they can pursue to help improve the quality of meals they can provide? This person's looking for nutrition and food production resources to help get them by on the very small reimbursements they currently qualify for. This is very much a, a meal quality question. Um, which is a tough one. We're all like, ah! <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. We may not have enough time to <laughs> remain her. Well, they could raise meal prices, which only goes right back to the parents. So, yeah. I mean, especially now with pr food prices being so high. I think that question would, I mean, I don't know if she's asking as a parent or as um, a director herself, but I mean, there could be a lot in that. You could call the school that you're concerned about and ask I mean I don't know there's a lot that that's question is more than just a basic answer it's a, yeah it's a complicated yeah. question a complicated yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. a loaded question I mean yeah you know, directors yeah. work very hard and very diligently to source quality food mm -hmm. for our students um, you know there's a lot that goes into figuring out meal plate costs especially when your margin is so tight as it is now our margins are very tight um, we do not have the procurement that we used to have. And now there's no such thing as a contract. It's now pretty much we are restaurants uh, because we're being, you know, we're being treated as such by your distributors um, because the distributors are being treated as such by the manufacturer. So it, it, it is a rough game. Um, hopefully the nutrition director has some um, has some help through the school system to try and backfill um, to make sure quality meals are still being um still being fed to the students. But the main thing is if you're in nutrition, you're gonna do what you have to do to make sure your students have quality meals. I think that's a great way to answer that question. And we can close out our Q&A. Chelsea, do you wanna put up the last slide we have? I wanna talk about uh, another webinar that's happening next week. So folks know about that. So Tuesday of next week, we have Supporting Your Healthy Team, Strategies to Promote Staff Wellness, Motivation, and Retention. The webinar is going to cover how to promote wellness among your staff, how to promote staff appreciation, retention, and good morale, and how to build trust and maintain communication to increase the strength of your team. So please attend that, register. Um, we'd love to have you. Also, something new that we're doing is we are doing a short survey after this webinar. So when you close out the screen, a Another window is going to pop up. It's just going to ask a few questions about this webinar, and that helps us learn if we are doing the best we can to meet your needs with these webinars. So please fill that out. We would greatly appreciate it. I want to give a huge round of applause to our speakers today, um, Scott, Don, and Andrea. Thank you so much for your insight and your expertise. And of course, always the work that you do is amazing. Thank you again, and have a great day, everyone. Bye.